After becoming an astronaut, do you view the world from a different angle? So was it my dream to become an astronaut first and foremost? No. You know, when I was growing up, um, I, I'm so happy we didn't say what year I was born in my introduction, but when I was growing up, I remember actually seeing uh, the first men walk on the moon. And I thought to myself, now that would be cool. That's what I want to do. Um, and it didn't become a reality to become an astronaut, like I mentioned earlier, till later when I was a test pilot. And part of that reality came true because one of the gentlemen that was talking, his name was John Young, and he had actually been to the moon twice, once landed on it, a second time flew around it. But he mentioned about practicing in some type of vertical landing craft to be able to learn how to land on the moon. And I said, oh my gosh, I'm a helicopter pilot. I already have those skills. So this is really the first time it dawned on me that I could potentially do this same type of thing. Um, and I, I tell you that because uh, I, I didn't think about it for a long time until later in life. Uh, so I just trekked through my life do, trying to find the things that I like to do. And that, like, I mentioned that earlier, and I would reemphasize that again. Uh, if you're interested in being an astronaut, astronauts, we need astronauts from all different fields because there's so much we do up there. We're, uh, you know, the plumbers, the electricians, the IT guys. We're the, you know, the maintainers. We're the toilet fixers. We're the spacewalkers. We're the scientists. And so we need people who have all of those skills to do that. So uh, if you're thinking about that, you, I, you're right on the right track. And of course, yes, um, I absolutely view life on this earth. I view um, being able to do whatever you want a lot differently. Uh, I, I was not a straight A student in college. I had a couple ups and downs in college. I had a couple failures as well as a lot of successes. And failure is good. Um, but what being an astronaut has reminded me is that you can do anything you want to do if you put your mind to it. And, and, determine, and have determination and find a path. So yes, for sure, I have a different perspective about a lot of things. What was your motivation as a child or a student that inspired you to move on a path not often undertaken by women? I think, first of all, I didn't think about it that way. I just thought of it as uh, something fun to do. Uh, and my path was not always as straight as it may seem. My biography maybe makes things look a little bit like they were straight from one thing to the next, but there were a lot of questions along the way. So you guys are getting ready to think about what you're going to do in the future, huh? Don't feel locked into something is my one piece of advice. I wanted to be a veterinarian when I was growing up. I thought for sure I was going to be a veterinarian. My father is a doctor. Uh, biology is a little bit in our family. Uh, but I also liked math and physics quite a bit. Um, I didn't know what I wanted to do really, I just love animals, so I wanted to be a veterinarian. I didn't get into my first choices of college, uh, so I had to make a second choice about what I wanted to do. And the Naval Academy was recommended because uh, my family was pretty athletic and we like camping, is what my brother told me. I think you like this school because you like camping. I said, okay, sure. Uh, and so that was not my first choice. When I was at the Naval Academy, I thought I wanted to be a diver because I was a swimmer. That seemed very comfortable. Uh, I didn't get that first choice either, so I ended up going to be a pilot. When I was a pilot, I wanted to fly jets because Top Gun just came out. So I thought that was cool, uh, and I became a helicopter pilot. So the path was not quite straight, and it wasn't even until later when I was in my mid-20s and I had gone to test pilot school, uh, first time I had met an astronaut and knew what astronauts did, that I thought, wow, you know, I have some of the same things, same qualifications that these, these people have, so maybe this is a path that I can take. So my, my point in all of that was my path was not de predetermined, was not straight, but that's okay. I think that's normal for everybody. And one of the things that I would leave you with is find something that you like. It might take one or two or three tries to figure out what you like, but if you find something that you like, you'll do it well. And that's most important. And I think all of the people who are astronauts, not all of them are test pilots. We have doctors. We actually have a veterinarian. We have engineers. We have scientists. But they're all pretty good at what, they're, what their fields are because they really enjoy them. And then they apply to be astronauts. So um, I, I would say I never thought about having a career that was uh, maybe male-dominated. And that was maybe even more so in the military um, because they were, they were my teammates. And we work together, and I think that's more important uh, than and singling out somebody for one thing or another. So thank you for your question. 
Ma'am, what are the major problems that you face when you come back to Earth? And how long does it take to regain all your physical abilities? We have um, some, what do you want to say, mitigating uh, methods up in space to make sure that people are coming back to Earth as normal as possible. So there are some things that we can't really uh, totally protect from. Uh, one of those things is some radiation. You know, we are above the atmosphere, so we are getting a, an amount of radiation which is a little bit more than folks get here on Earth. We have protective covering on the spacecraft, so we do as much as we can while we're out there. We have protective covering on our spacesuits, so again, we do as much as we can. But you do get some radiation, and you never can change that. Um, but the things that do change is um, your physiology changes, which is, it's sort of fun, actually, to watch your body change. You know, things happen like the calluses on your feet start to go away because you don't walk, uh, you know, while you're up there. Um, my fingernails seem to grow a lot. My hair grew a lot while I was up there. So it's sort of fun to watch all that happening. No, gravity is not taking a toll on you. I think some of the little wrinkles in your face go away for a couple reasons. Uh, one, because there's a fluid shift, so the fluid comes up to your head. Um, but uh, that's just sort of temporary. Your spine also expands uh, because of the vertebrae, the cartilage between the vertebrae is not having any pressure on it. But, so it makes you a little bit taller while you're up in space. Um, but that all, some of those things change when you come back home. As soon as you get, you can't escape gravity. Once you're here, you're here. So you shrink a little bit. Your back hurts a little bit because you're shrunk back. Um, unfortunately, some of the wrinkles come back, but that's okay. Uh, that's just life. But uh, some of the things that we have to really worry about are bone density and muscle mass, right? Because when you're up in space, your bones start to leach away right away. You don't need, you have this skeletal structure that we have. And so essentially, it's advanced osteoporosis. It starts to kick in right away for everybody. And so to mitigate that, we run on the treadmill, which you've seen probably pictures of with the harness which holds you down. We also do weightlifting, which uh, really helps particularly in the hip area and the feet area because we do squat type of exercises with a bar on our back as well as deadlifts, and that all uh, helps to regenerate the bone density. And then also the cardiovascular with the running on the treadmill and the muscle mass and with the bicycle. So all of those things help when we get back. So answer, the long answer to your short question is all of that new uh, technology with all of those machines allowed all of, most all of us now to come back in pretty good shape. So it takes the fluid shift maybe 24 hours or 48 hours or so to get back to normal uh, so that you are, your blood volume is back to normal so you can actually f do f more physical fitness, uh, physical exercises. Uh, but my bone density muscle mass were essentially the same. And we were able to test that about a week after getting home. And you could sort of, you can see people are the same as when they left because we work out so rigorously while we're up in space. There's also new um, diets that we're trying while we're up there because there's definitely some things that are in, in the diet that will cause bone density issues. So we, we test ourselves right away the first moment we get back, about 10 days after we get back, two weeks after we get back, a month, and then I'm going to have another test at about six months, but uh, should be pretty much back to normal within, within two weeks or so, generally back to normal. Do astronauts lose consciousness during takeoff since it's against gravity and high speed makes you feel dizzy? Did you feel someone has taken you by your shoulders? Liftoff is a little bit, in a spacecraft, the way they have us seated and the way that the, the, the gravity force, the G, kicks in is what we call a G factor, right? How much G, like right now we have one G of gravity pushing on us. Uh, it's a little bit different um, than in an airplane that people think about loss of consciousness in an airplane if somebody, what they call, pulls too many Gs, sometimes you have loss of consciousness. And the reason for that is the blood is draining from your head and that will make you lose consciousness. In a spacecraft, the way we are seated and the way that the G kicks in is, like I mentioned, it pushes down here on your chest. So it makes it a little bit harder to breathe because it's pushing your lungs down, but it doesn't pull the blood out of your head. So no, none of us lost consciousness on, a, on takeoff or even landing for that matter. Um, you can have a uh, abnormal landing, we call it a ballistic landing, which is a down mode from the normal type of landing. And in that case, uh, the G level can get up to about eight or nine so that's pretty extreme. 
Um, and we've had a couple people who have had that experience. It's not, it's not a bad uh, mode of the spacecraft, the Soyuz. It's just a down moding. It doesn't, just not acting normally, but it's not anything bad. It's just it's how it's designed. It's aerodynamically designed to do that, and it's fully survivable. But in that case, that was a little bit excessive pressure. If you can imagine eight times gravity is pushing down on you, it's pretty huge. But it's not for a long period of time. And we test this out so we all know what that feels like by riding in a centrifuge uh, in Star City outside of Moscow where we do the training. We're in a centrifuge and we go through the whole landing profile with that, that number of Gs so you can feel what it's like. So no loss of conscious under normal uh, la launch or landing. A ballistic might have some, some impacts. Join our global community of English learners, absolutely free. Download video transcripts, listen offline, start our beginner course, and join live classes with certified teachers. Access over 1,000 resources to improve your English faster. Everything's in one place, community.englishspeeches.ca. Let's speak English together.